Hello, I'm Philip Duncan from Weather Watch TV on YouTube. Thank you for joining us. We have our Australia-only seven-day outlook. We've brought it forward one day this week because of the developing storm out there in the Coral Sea. Now, uh, at the time of recording this, which was on Wednesday morning, it still hadn't been named officially by the Bureau of Meteorology. I know many of you know what the name will be, but weather forecasters don't typically mention the name or at least talk about it regularly until it is officially named and formed. And that, at this stage, hadn't yet happened. Um, you might be seeing it in news stories. It's logical if you can see what the next name is on the list. But the reason why forecasters don't name a storm before it's formed is because another low might rapidly form before it and steal that name first. So you have to wait, technically, until the, the storm is formed. Now, that could be later today, uh, but it certainly is taking its time. The Americans have already said it's a cyclone. The Australian Bureau of Meteorology at this stage hadn't yet named it, but it's deepening still as it moves on and towards the coastline. Other lows here and another uh, former cyclone out there to see, or falling apart at least. So let's have a closer look at this system. It is still deepening. It is really taking longer than we thought. We were expecting it to be named by Monday. Here we are two days later and it's still not officially into that status, not at least when we recorded this, uh, which was around about um, 7, 8 in the morning if you live in Sydney or Brisbane. So the storm is deepening. It is still tracking in towards Townsville, probably just south of Townsville and north of Mackay. So we'll show you that in a split second, uh, the closer version of it, but let's get through the usual forecast. So here we are on Thursday, the storm up here uh, coming in towards Townsville, but uh, some other places of interest because of this, the red line, right, that measures air thickness. So north of that red line, hot, tropical, humid weather, uh, maybe a bit drier the further inland you are, but certainly it is a hot airflow. So that means places like Canberra, who I didn't mention last week, sorry, 31 degrees coming through for you on Thursday. That'll be your hottest day of the next seven, but uh, next Tuesday you'll also be getting up to that. Might be a little bit cloudy for you. Darwin, 28 degrees. Thunderstorms coming through for you for the next four or five days ahead. And back to sort of into the New South Wales area, uh, Dubbo, 38 to 40 degrees or so for Thursday, but you'll be dropping down to 32 degrees by the time we get uh, into the weekend. So let's have a closer look at the storm. Here we are at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. That is uh, Brisbane time or Queensland time. It's uh, The timing of it will be moving around a bit, mostly because as the storm moves in, it is still deepening. In fact, it might be deepening right up until it makes landfall. That makes it a little bit complicated because the storm's sort of growing as it moves in. But uh, the air pressure here, not too bad at 988, but it is dropping quite quickly as it moves further in. So the map we've got here, we've, we've put up here Thursday p.m., Friday a.m. because the different models are still quite struggling with the timing of it. They're all pretty much in alignment of where it comes in, but the timing of it does change. Some have it coming in by Thursday evening, Others have it by Friday morning. So either way, it is coming into that area. 965, it says there, it looks as though air will be probably the main area that it comes into, but it's certainly between Townsville and Bowen, I would say, are the two sort of main centres where this is likely to be coming in between. But anywhere from Ingham all the way down really off the screen here are still in that risk zone, mostly because heavy rain will be sliding down the coastline there, but the heaviest rain on the map here for now is in that zone. And then we fast forward through till 10 o'clock Friday morning, Queensland time. Now, some models still have it up here closer to air in Townsville, but as you can see here, much further inland falling apart and probably not too damaging at this point. Although the rain might be very welcome, but the winds might still be a little bit of a problem uh, circling around that system there. So that's the big picture uh, of it, or the closer picture of it, I should say. Here is the big picture of it on Friday, well inland. So lunchtime, it's already inland, we hope. That will really minimize rainfall in those coastal areas and it minimizes storm damage uh, and storm surge as well. So like I say, it could still be deepening when it comes in. This is not locked in. Please follow the Bureau of Meteorology. They are the official source for warnings here in Queensland. Let's get back to the rest of the country now. It's actually a colder change coming in down here for you guys in the southeast. Adelaide, 22 degrees, your coldest day of the next seven days. It'll be the same on Saturday as well. It's going to be a bit cloudy for you. Hobart, 18 degrees for you and same temperature on Saturday as well, so certainly cooler. Canberra, 25 degrees as that change comes through, but just a little further north in Sydney, 
your hottest day of the week coming up. So like I say, Adelaide, Hobart, Canberra, your coolest day of the next seven days is on Friday here. But for Sydney, you're going to be somewhere between 34 and 37 degrees, a little bit windy around the coastline. And further up around Newcastle, 39 or 40 degrees for you, your hottest day of the week coming up. Windy uh, easterlies blowing through here from Perth to Geraldton, um, fading out kind of the further north you go. Into Saturday now, and Melbourne, your coolest day of the next week ahead, 20 degrees for you, that's nothing too big. Um, Brisbane, showers for you. Now, the, the showery weather will be off and on around Brisbane. There's nothing too dramatic in there, really. It's more of a risk of a shower, 31 degrees, and certainly muggy, humid weather there for you. On the other side, not muggy, but Perth, you have your hottest day of the next seven days coming through for you on Saturday. You'll be about 32 degrees. You'll match that again Tuesday of next week. And Alice Springs, because of the southeasterly flow, it'll be uh, 34 degrees for you. That's, uh, that's down by several degrees. And you've got the leftover cyclone not far away from you, although it is a distance. But you can certainly see it's moving further inland. Right, let's go through to Sunday. The storm kind of stops. It's not a storm anymore. It's an X cyclone, uh, but it's basically stopped here. And now you're seeing thunderstorms down to places like Charleville and Brisbane. That humid weather dragged down by it. You'll be noticing it from Rockhampton southwards. In fact, you'll be noticing it all the way down to about Port Macquarie as a result of that low coming down and just dragging in that humid weather for you. Sunday, not a lot of news around, but Adelaide, your hottest day of the week, 32 degrees, mostly sunny. Uh, Perth, 27 degrees for you, um, with a mixture of air flows, you've got sort of a nor'wester on this side and a sou'wester over here, so there might be even the chance of a couple of showers, especially closer to that area of low pressure. Next week, messy kind of stuff around Queensland now, because of the leftovers of the cyclone and the sort of thunderstorms that are bubbling up down to about the New South Wales border, but certainly that red line dropping again, the heat on Monday pushing further down across the country. Melbourne, your hottest day of the week will be on Monday, 29 or 30 degrees for you. And Tasmania, we haven't forgotten about you. You warm up uh, as we go through Monday, 25 degrees is your top temperature there in Hobart. And I think a couple of other places might go a degree or two warmer. And then into Tuesday of next week, the leftovers now actually are coming into Alice Springs, the leftovers of the cyclone. It, we did think at first it might turn around and come back out again, but the big high out here in the Tasman Sea kind of stopping that from happening. So probably good news that you've got some rain and showers up here that'll be good for those who do need it, um, and it fills up some of the rivers and streams that are dry. Elsewhere, more thunderstorms around Tuesday next week. It does get hotter around much of Australia. Here is the rainfall. Let's start with the cyclone. Not a huge amount, not as much as we were saying was potential yesterday. Looks as though it's going to move through at a good speed, and that's different to Jasper. Jasper was very slow, and then it just sort of fell apart with all that tropical rain. So we're seeing here out, out to sea, 300 millimetres, over Townsville, dropping down to 150 to 200 millimetres, Townsville to air, that is. And then it goes inland. And then you've got the thunderstorms around here, that's sort of in the 50 to 100 millimetre mark, um, the purple areas or the 100 millimetre areas. And then pretty much elsewhere, not a lot of rain in this zone, pretty dry, mostly dry in Perth, if not completely dry for you. Heavy thunderstorms along here uh, next to Tom Price down to Kalgoorlie and then further up, obviously, as I said before, Darwin, over towards about Broome, plenty of showers around, mostly though up towards the Northern Territories. There we go, a lot to cover today. Now, tomorrow, Thursday, we'll do a special brief update on the cyclone. It should be named by then officially and we can finally say it out loud. Um, and if it is named, we will change that on the YouTube video for you today as well. Thanks very much for joining us. We'll catch you again tomorrow, Thursday, with our next update.